watching HCTV 22 City News, your source for news and information on issues, people, arts and entertainment, and sports in the city of Hawthorne. In this edition of City News, one resident recently got the surprise of a lifetime. Find out what new high-end health club now calls Hawthorne home. And they teed off for a good cause. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Hello and welcome to City News. I'm Michelle Mizell Archer. Residents who are dedicated to civic duty are recognized at this yearly event with a big surprise. Sophia Pop reports. This ceremony acknowledges outstanding citizens who have gone above and beyond at doing good deeds for the community, and their names are now revealed in this room right behind me. It was the best kept secret in town until recently. We want people that are that believe in the community that aren't phony, they're not shallow, the award is given it to them because of who their friends are. Recipients of the Citizen of the Year and Ned Chafee Awards were honored at a luncheon sponsored by the Hawthorne Chamber of Commerce. They've helped out the city, the chamber, individuals, families that have gone through problems. Before the winners were announced, we talked to family and friends who were secretly waiting in another room. But she's always there. Any way that she can help in any way that she can care for you, she is a nurturing person. Darlene Love, a dedicated retiree, serving the community for 40 years, got emotional when she was announced as the 2008 Citizen of the Year. Never in my wildest dream would I have ever believed this would have happened to me. And I really don't feel that I'm doing that much. But I always feel there is room at the top for more. She's just inspiration to all of us, including myself. She helped form the Holly Park Homeowners Association. She's on so many organizations, committees, nonprofits. Uh, she's busy or retired when she worked full time. Each year, a committee of five past recipients of the Citizen of the Year Award take on the task of choosing the winner based on their volunteerism. Councilman Daniel Juarez is part of the voting committee and said it was tough to reach a decision. How do you pick one out of so many people that do things like Darlene does? And, and when, you, when you rack and stack everybody, um, Darlene, this time, came out on top. The Ned Chafee Award was presented to Candy Cargill Fuller for her service to the community. The award was accepted on her behalf. Reporting for HCTV, I'm Sophia Pop. The Hawthorne Chamber of Commerce has been around since the 1920s. Last year, we brought you a story about a local Boy Scout who collected and donated supplies to members of the armed forces in order to earn his Eagle Scout badge, the highest rank attainable in the international program. Well, Chris Burris of Hawthorne Boy Scout Troop 283 was officially pinned an Eagle Scout during a recent ceremony. Chris says he is relieved to finally achieve his goal. That whole time I was working so hard for it and it was really great to finally achieve it. Chris will be attending UC Santa Cruz in the fall, but he says he will stay active as a Boy Scout. The good thing about Eagle is that you don't stop even if you're an Eagle Scout, you still are involved in your troop. Chris plans to major in video game design. Equinox Health Club has officially opened its doors for business. Its more than 60,000 square foot building makes it the largest Equinox ever built. Christina Pascucci reports. We're at the grand opening of the Equinox Health Club in Hawthorne, and this place is unbelievable. They have everything you could possibly want here, from a healthy organic food place downstairs, state-of-the-art equipment, and even a spa. Let's go check it all out. You walk around, it's amazing, and we haven't even seen the pool. You know, there's going to be a pool on the roof, Olympic-sized lap pool with cabanas. Equinox opened its doors at 2 p.m., Hardly a second passed by before new members piled in. They were excited by what they saw. I'm uh, more than impressed. Uh, I've been uh, a guy that's worked out most of my life, and I've never seen a club with the amenities that this has. We're going to have rooftop basketball, rooftop pool, Olympic size, three laps. We have a Pilates studio, spin studio, a yoga studio, our group fitness main studio, and a full uh, seven-room spa with massage, face and body treatments, and manicure and pedicure. The friendly staff is always on hand, and only the best of the best is offered to customers. There are machines and equipment in this gym that I've never seen before. To get rid of lower back pain, to get rid of any kind of stiffness. The power plate costs 10 
thousand dollars and stretches muscles you probably didn't even know you have. Aside from their equipment, they have another secret weapon, their world's class training team. For some new members, this gym is about more than getting fit. Me and my mom like are apart like sometimes because my school is in PV, so I have to live with my grandma. So this was like brought us closer together because we both love to exercise. Equinox costs about $125 each month. The payoff you receive is worth it. At Equinox, we deliver an unparalleled member experience that gets our members the results they're looking for. Equinox has anything you could possibly want in a health club in addition to a very motivating workout environment. For HGTV, I'm Christina Pascucci. Equinox also offers a kids club. To find out more about becoming a member, contact them at 310-727-9543. Educational and youth-oriented programs have suffered due to recent cutbacks in state and federal funding. That's why big corporations, local businesses, and residents help sponsor this yearly event at the Chester Washington Golf Course. They came from all over the area to play. Everybody loves golf. It's a nice day. We can do it during the week. Knowing they should be somewhere else on a Monday. I'm supposed to be working today, but it's okay. That's because this golf tournament was all for charity. Say, so who's got the short game today, huh? It's just a good way to bring uh, teachers and uh, vendors for the district, community people together, and just uh, have a feel-good afternoon, which ultimately supports the kids. Last year, the Hawthorne Education Foundation's annual golf tournament raised $30,000 for Hawthorne schools. Yeah, Tax dollars only go so far, so if we can all pitch in whatever we can, there's a lot to be done. It doesn't hurt to have a little fun in the process. Look how beautiful it is out here today. And hey, if your boss wouldn't let you off, then you might as well have him come along. My boss is right, right over there, so... <laughs> Why not? Golfing for a good cause sounds like a pretty good excuse to take the day off. More than 140 people registered to play in this year's event. This is the Hawthorne Education Foundation's fourth annual golf tournament. Organizers are still calculating how much was raised this year. One local high school is among the best in the nation. The Hawthorne Math and Science Academy was recently ranked number 118 in a Newsweek Challenge Index of the top 1,300 schools in the country. The index rates public high schools according to a ratio of advanced placement, international baccalaureate, and Cambridge tests taken by all students in the school divided by the number of graduating seniors. Coming up next on City News, a well-known organization dedicated to helping the community is asking for help. Also, a school program ends the year in a very exciting way. Stay tuned. for you. Pop quiz. Ready? Name any funny movie. A drama. Name a mystery. And one more thing. Name the movie your kids saw today in science class. Know what really matters. Know about your kid's school and know about your kid. Find out 100 ways to know more, do more. Hi, I'm Magic Johnson, and you're watching Hawthorne TV, HCTV 22. Welcome back. 
VFW posts are the places where the veterans of foreign wars and their families often come to socialize and find comfort. But reports show that these havens, along with their members, are methodically fading away. Here's Camille Brown with a special report on this important issue. VFW Post 2075 in Hawthorne is facing challenges. The heating and air conditioning unit that's up there is about 35 to 40 years old. The parking lot isn't in the best shape either. We're estimating that the replacement will cost us around $20,000. Post 2075 is among the hundreds of VFWs nationwide that need hefty repairs or have had to close. It's a problem resulting from the much bigger issue of the organization's dwindling funds because its aging members are dying off and are not being replaced by younger veterans. The bleak situation leaves Bob Steinhauer, the post commander, no other option but to make this plea. You hate to go hat in hand and, and be a beggar, but uh, necessity requires it, and then, so that's what I'm doing. Commander Steinhauer hopes the community will help the post survive. If we could get some of our um, businesses who are maybe more in a position to, to help us out, uh, that, would, that would be a big help. Members say the funding will help support the services they provide. This post is important because we do good things. We support Operation Uplink, which is the phone cards to overseas persons. We do wheelchair games. We visit the hospital with the post. And we give scholarships. In fact, we just gave scholarships out to all, our, all the high schools, all four of the high schools. The money will also keep the post doors open to its members who say they need a place to assemble, associate, and to find security and relief. The post itself, again, is important because it provides a camaraderie uh, that I don't get elsewhere. Sometimes they don't have to talk about it, just come in and sit with people that know what they've been through, and that's a big support. It's very safe here. That's one of the great things about it. It's very safe. And we have here an organization that takes care of its own, takes care of other veterans. The Post also takes care of the family members of those in the service. Margie Lopez recently joined the VFW as an auxiliary member in order to honor her son, who is an active duty Marine. And he's such a good son, and it spills over into how he is in the service, and, and I wanted to also do something to be like my son, you know, he has taught me a lot. Lopez and her son are the youthful members the Post is seeking in order to carry its works into the future. We need people to come in to keep the Post going, but even more important than that, we need the people to identify themselves so that we can help them. The more people that are in the service organizations, the stronger we are and the more people in Washington will listen. Thus, ensuring that the men and women who have given so much for their country will not be forgotten. For HCTV, I'm Camille Brown. Reports show that the number of VFW posts across the nation have decreased from 10,500 to 8,400 within the past decade. National membership is about 1.7 million. Now that's only 10% of the estimated 20 million U.S. veterans eligible to join the VFW. Here's one national nonprofit who wants to help local veterans and others in need. Rebuilding Together South Bay plans to send a team of volunteers in August to help about three homeowners in the South Bay who need repairs and handicap modifications done to their homes. These homeowners must be low-income disabled military personnel or veterans. All projects are funded through the nonprofit. Now, if you know anyone who meets these qualifications and needs help, call 310-999-5050. Well, this program mostly aims to help students become bilingual, but obviously it's taught them how to be in the spotlight, too. Alex Batres reports. Over 200 Ramon Elementary students grooved to Latin rhythms and fascinated the audience for an end-of-the-year performance at the Hawthorne Memorial Center.